back in 2012, when there was a lot of interest in the Mayans and their prophecies, there was also a lot of interest in the concept or theory of Mayans in Georgia. They found some structures up in North Georgia that were very much like the Mayan structures in Mesoamerica, and they also featured it in the first episode of America on Earth, where the guy claims to have proven that the polygorskite blue clay used by Mexican Mesoamerican tribes actually had its origins in Georgia. However, it's not really popular or correct to use the word Mayan when describing the cultures of Georgia. However, according to Richard Thornton, who was the main guest on that first episode of America on Earth, it's pretty much mainstream today to say that one or more of the factions or tribes that made up the Creek Alliance or the Mississippian complex were either Mesoamerican or had a very strong Mesoamerican influence. So the correct term to use for cultures in Georgia that had this influence would be today Mesoamerican. My attention was first called to the Bilbo Mound by an article I read by Richard Thornton on his blog and website, People of One Fire. The Bilbo Mound is arguably the oldest Native American mound in North America, and you can see from the photo that Richard has in his article here that it's to the east of the Truman Parkway. He actually had that wrong we did some research and found a paper that was done by the University of South Carolina on an expedition to the Bilbo Mound back in 2007, and it showed the true location, which is here. And you can see it's actually to the west of the end of the Truman Parkway, right in downtown Savannah, Georgia. Now, the reason that Richard probably made the error is because some of the older photographs, aerial photographs of the Bilbo Mound that you can find on the net have it before the Truman Parkway was built. And the road that the Truman Parkway replaced actually ran to the west of the Bilbo Mound, so it was to the east of that road. That road's still there. Um, it's a no-access road, only used by the business that is on that property now, and there's a railroad track that runs along there still. But this article that Richard Thornton wrote got me real curious because I've lived here in Savannah all my life and never knew about it, and Richard Hodges, my friend and historian, was also very curious, so we started digging a little deeper, and we started looking on Google Earth at this location, and we found that in the images that Google Earth took in 1997 and 2003, you can clearly see some kind of an effigy there. It either looks like some kind of a spider monkey with its tail curled up in the air, or it looks kind of like a human figure, maybe in a dance or a pose or a kick or doing something like that. On most of the other years that Google Earth took photographs by satellite from this area, you can't see the effigy quite as clearly. You can see the rings around the area in that quadrant. But we think this is because in 97 it was still black and white, and also because maybe they took the photographs during the winter when only the evergreen trees would have had foliage. Now, a lot of the area around the Bilbo Mound was used for rice plantations in the early days. And some of it has been developed, but supposedly the area of the Bilbo Mound itself is protected. And it may be that the trees that are growing on top of the mounds there are extremely old and of a different variety than the ones in the area around it. And that's why during winter you can see it so much clearly or more clear. 
The more I looked at this mound and the effigy that you can see from the sky, the more it reminded me of some of the pictures I'd seen studying Native Americans in Georgia. And it also reminded me of some of the images that I'd seen on Richard Thornton's site. These are pictures of a Mesoamerican rain goddess, and they bear a striking resemblance to the effigy of Bilbo Mound. The Native Americans used to walk the concentric circles of the mound, and they'd walk closer and closer to the center, and they'd get to the center of it, and after going through the spiritual journey, it was supposed to bring rain, and the heart of the Native American rain goddess was the center of the mound. But if the Bilbo Mound is a Mesoamerican rain goddess and is similar to the Serpent Mound in Ohio and mounds of the other Mississippian culture, it would be very, very strange indeed because the Bilbo Mound predates the Mississippian culture by a good four or five thousand years. Now before the Creeks came to southeast Georgia, there was another type of Native American here, the Uchis, and they were a lot different, but they seem to have had some of these Mesoamerican influences too. And according to some archaeologists we talked to at uh, Georgia Southern University, these guys were different than any other Native Americans in all of North America. They built on stilt houses in mangrove swamps. Some of them practiced cranial deformation, had elongated skulls. But the Bilbo Mound would have been even earlier than the Uchi culture, the ancient or archaic Native Americans culture or the woodland cultures. Many of their practices, like the building of stilt houses similar to Indonesians, was carried on by the Uchi Native Americans, and later on, maybe even the Gullah tribes. But they're a very mysterious population of peoples that we don't know a whole lot about. And in this series of videos investigating the Bilbo Mound, we're going to talk to some historians and archaeologists, museum curators, and try to find out all we can about this early mound. Studying the reports from 2007, one of the most remarkable things was that these guys were actually building rectangular pits into the mound and they would keep wet blue clay in these rectangular pits for trade. They would store them. We don't know what the significance was. The archaeological team did not test to see if it was polygorskite, and of course they didn't test to see if it was the same polygorskite used in Mesoamerica, but if this tradition of using this blue goes back 5,500 years, it would be really amazing, and that almost seems to be the case here. Now what we want to do is actually go out there and see the trees growing on top of the mound, and that's one of the ways that we can possibly identify how old the mound is, how old the effigy is. If those trees are older than 300 years, then we know it hasn't been tampered with, and we know that that's the effigy that was here when the colonists arrived, and it's probably the way it's been for 5,500 years. The colonists were amazed to find when they got here that the Native Americans had built this structure because it looked to them as if it was in the middle of a lake. Now that could be because sea levels have risen since the time in which it was built. It also might be because we're dealing with a maritime stilt house building culture that preferred the mangrove swamps. So stick with us and we'll try to find out everything there is to know about the oldest Native American burial mound in North America and this exotic culture different from all the other Native Americans in North America that lived here in Georgia and also down in the Florida in the Archaic period. I'm standing here underneath the Harry S. Truman Parkway, which goes straight through the Bilbo Mound. Bilbo Mound is the oldest mound 
in America. And I've been living here in Savannah for a good time. And uh, we didn't even know it was going to be right, was right underneath our feet here, right underneath the Cedar Parkway that they just built. Now, the Bill Boat Mail is 3,400 feet C. And right next to it is. Savannah Golf Course, which is built right on top of Brewster Hill. We might ride through there later and check out Brewster Hill. On the other side of that is the Elaine and those areas are a little bit younger. There are interments from 1480 to 2500 BC, somewhere around there. But it's all very old, and no doubt some of it was torn up during the building of this megastructure that you see here right above me. But we had a problem trying to get back far enough to see the actual mounds. We did see them, and we saw the second circle. We can see that it's still intact, but I fell into some quicksand while trying to get back into it, but I was able to whip out my whip and lash it out and get it around a tree trunk out there and slowly I was able to pull uh, myself out and get to dry land while Richard went for help. Luckily I was able to call him down. He didn't have to go too far. But we'll be back very soon with better equipment to see and get deeper in and see the Bilbo map. Bilbo is also the name of a character in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and according to the Red Book of Hobbiton his grandfather invented golf by knocking a goblin's head off, and it rolled into a rabbit hole. And thus, he invented the game of golf. And that's kind of interesting because this complex of mounds is where golf was invented as well. Or at least it's where the first game of golf was played in North America by a group of Scottish folks when Savannah was occupied by the British. They played it out here among the Native American burial mounds, and the shape of the mounds is what we owe the shape of modern golf courses are. So we've got a little bit of analogy to the Lord of the Rings with this Bilbo mound. Historians think it was named after a type of Spanish sword, and we'll get to why we think that may be as we investigate this further. Thank <laughs> you.